Welcome back to Fix This Build That. I'm Brad and today we're gonna to be making two tapering jigs and I'm gonna let you decide if the fancy one is worth the extra effort. The first jig is super simple to make. You can make this thing with just your table saw, a drill, and a couple drill bits. The second one pulls in more tools to make it and it's gonna take more time, but it's got the features for that time invested. So watch the video and let me know in the comments which one that you'd rather make. I'm using half inch plywood for both of these jigs so I can keep the weight down and also have the blade as low as possible during use. Now the simple jig is gonna be eight inches wide when it's finished, but I started with an eight and a quarter inch panel so I can trim it to the exact size later. I'm using a test piece of 2x2 for setup, and this is going to represent a table leg which I would typically be cutting a taper on. And my favorite taper on these 2x2 legs is going from an inch and a half wide, which is the actual size of the 2x2, down to one inches wide at the foot of the leg on the two inside faces. I marked the final shape on the end of the leg, and then I measured up three inches and made marks on the outside edge of the leg where the taper would start. And these marks are important because I'm going to be using those later to set up the piece on the jig. The most complicated thing about this jig is just figuring out where to put the holes, honestly. And you can put them pretty much anywhere, but if you put a little forethought to it, it's going to be a lot better. So I'm going to put this down on the jig and see where it would lay with a typical taper that I would want to cut on it. I used the registration marks and I lined up the leg on the jig for the cut. I like to cut the taper on the front side of this simple jig because it leaves room on the back for the temporary blocks that I'm going to be installing later. And by doing this quick setup, I can see where the hole should go for my most typical usage, but yours may vary depending upon your needs. I marked the first row of holes four inches away from the cutting edge. The two outside spots were five inches from the end of the jig, and a third one was in the center. I went ahead and made another row of three holes set back two and a half inches from that first set to give me some more clamping options. Now the hold downs that I'm using have a 5 16 of an inch T-bolt, a washer, and a knob. They mount through the holes that I'm going to be drilling, and they can swivel for a lot of different clamping options just from one location. I got the hold downs and all the other hardware for these two jigs from Woodcraft, the sponsor of today's video. I'll have a link below in the description to all the items I used so you can pick them up to build your own. And thanks to Woodcraft for sponsoring this video. Next I pre-drilled a small pilot hole through each mark on the board and then I flipped it over to drill the recesses for the T-bolts. Now T-bolts have different sized heads and you just need a bit that is slightly larger than the head of the T-bolt. And the recess doesn't need to be deep, just enough to let that bolt sit below the surface so it's flush and won't drag. I drilled out the hole in the other five, checking the T-bolts along the way as I went. And I'm using a Fortzner bit to drill these holes, but a spade bit would also work fine as well. After that, I switched over to a 5 16 of an inch drill bit for the bolt shaft. Now since these bolts are going to be stationary, using an exact size bit helps keep them from flopping around too much. I drilled out all the holes using a scrap backer to stop any blowout on the top of the jig. And just like that, I had the bulk of the jig done and the bolts fit into the recess and the hold down can be put on and locked in place with the washer and the knob on top to hold the work pieces. Now the great thing is if you find that the hold down locations don't work for you, it's super quick and easy to drill a new hole wherever you need it. You can do it in less than a minute. All right, there's one important thing that you need to consider and I did not, but I completely lucked out. Look down here and I'll show you what I'm talking about. I've got my fence set at eight inches and that's where I'm gonna attach my runner, but you wanna make sure you leave space for your runner that's gonna go in the miter slot. So these holes, make sure the outside edges are not gonna hit that miter slot or you won't be able to take your bolts in and out. Now the last part of this jig is to put a runner on it for the miter bar slot. I used some scrap cherry hardwood that I had on hand for mine. I wouldn't recommend using plywood because it doesn't seem to slide as smoothly. And when you're going for a fit, I like the strip to slide freely, but stop when it's not being pushed. And this first one that I cut was a bit too loose, but the second runner was just what I like. It moves freely with pressure, but then it stops without it. Now to mount the runner, I moved the fence to eight inches for the final width of the jig, and I lowered the blade out of the way. Then I put some stacks of washers along the miter bar slot. You want just enough to hold the runner above the surface of the table saw. And just to note, my runner was about 3 eighths of an inch thick. Now you can use some CA glue along the runner. A little dab will do you. And if you've got some activator spray, you can spray that onto the bottom of the sled to make the bonding a little bit quicker when you put it in place. So I set the jig flush against the fence, and then I pressed down on the runner until it bonded well enough to lift out. 
Now for a more permanent bond, I drilled countersunk holes into the runner and I installed three quarter inch screws to hold it in place. I trimmed the runner flush with the base on both ends and then I moved the fence away and trimmed the base to the final size, leaving that edge exactly lined up with the blade for my cuts. So there you go, in just about 10 or 15 minutes you can put this all together. And this is great right now for one-off, but if you wanna make repeatable cuts, let's go back over to the table saw. I'll show you how I set it up and do repeatable cuts just by using some CA glue and some painter's tape along with some little clamping blocks. So start off by clamping down the first part to be cut based on your layout lines. And now you can put in some of those positioning blocks to make it repeatable. All you have to do is use a piece of tape on the sled and then get a stop block with a straight edge on it and put another piece of tape on that. You can use CA glue on one surface and activator on the other to lock them in place. I just put another small block on the back using the same method and now you've got reference blocks that you can do as many cuts as you need positioning them off these two pieces. Now this process is pretty fast and honestly it'd probably take like 20 or 30 different positionings of these blocks before you can come close to investing the extra time that's going to take to make this next jig. So what it lacks in easy adjustment, it makes up for in the speed to make it and the limited tools that you have to use. If you want to spend a little bit extra time, you can get a jig that is much more configurable and a lot easier to use. This is a design that has been out there for a long time. A lot of people have built it because it's a great design. So I'm going to show you how it looks and we'll see how it's better than this one. I'm using the same sheet of half inch plywood for this jig, except this time I'm making the jig 12 inches wide for a little more capacity as a straight line or joining jig. So I cut it to 12 and a quarter inches to start with. I'm also making it the full depth of my table saw, which for most folks would be 27 inches, mine here is 30 inches. Now instead of using temporary blocks for this jig, we're going to have an adjustable full length fence. So I grabbed an off cut of 3 quarter inch plywood from my wood bin that was 2 and a quarter inches wide, which was exactly what I was looking for. And next I made a few marks on the sled to figure out where I wanted the adjustment slots to go. I could have easily just watched someone else's video or looked at a commercial version for these measurements, but I kind of love figuring this stuff out on my own and reasoning out where things should go. And also, it lets me easily blame myself when I inevitably screw something up. I ended up going with 9 inch wide slots on the base that were 3.5 inches from each end and a 27.5 inch fence. So if you have a 27 inch table saw, it'd probably be a 24.5 inch fence for you. Now based on my layout, I cut the fence to size and I was ready for the next step. So next up, we're gonna route some slots in this. We can have full adjustability on the fence as well as the base. I started off with the half inch straight bit to route out the grooves for the bolt heads. Now, similar to before, it just needs to be deep enough to recess the head completely. All the router table cuts are stop cuts, meaning you have to drop the piece down onto the bit and stop it before you go out the other end. Just be safe when you're doing this and make sure you have the piece held tight. You can also do this with a plunge router and a straight edge as well. I marked the fence at one and three quarters of an inch and two inches before and after the bit to show me when to stop the cuts. I started off with a pass on each end of the sled base, starting and stopping at the marks that I'd made on the fence. After this pass, the bolt fit nicely, but I wanted a little more wiggle room, so I adjusted the fence out a bit and made another pass to widen the slots. I repeated this process on the fence, making a slot for the bolt heads with that half inch bit. Now after that, I switched out from the half inch bit to a quarter inch bit, which isn't what I'd recommend, which you'll see in just a minute. This cut will go all the way through the wood, and instead of taking the whole cut in one pass, I set the bit to half the depth remaining for that initial cut. And then I adjusted the bit up to go all the way through the fence for that final pass. Now since I'm using 5 16 of an inch bolts, I had to push the fence out and widen that slot just a little bit as well, because it was a quarter inch bit. I made a test pass to confirm that the bolt fit, and after I did that, I extended the slot all the way down the length of the fence. Now for the jig base, I decided to just use a 3 8 of an inch router bit and make one pass on each side instead of doing two passes with a quarter inch, and that worked out nicely. Now, but the fence was another story after I started looking at it. All right, so I just finished up with the rail and everything fits in here fine. The only problem is because of this long slot, there is some flex. And I don't like that. And I could just glue a piece in here and stiffen that up. But then I'm going to have to look at it and see that all the time. And we can't have that. So I'm going to give in to my perfectionist tendencies and just go over the scrap pile, get that other piece of wood and make another fence because it's my fence. And I don't want to look at a nasty fence for the rest of my life. Don't look at nasty fences for the rest of your life. Do it right. 
I don't know why I walked that way. Scrap bins over here. I made the shallow pass on the bolt head on the new piece, just like before. Then I went with the 3 8 of an inch bit to cut a slot starting an inch and a half from the end, and then I went all the way to one inch left of center, which I had marked earlier on the board. Now for that second slot, I dropped in the cut one inch right of center, so this gave me a two inch brace in the middle, which completely shored up the fence and made it nice and solid. I finished off by routing a small recess on the underside of the fence that will be in contact with the work pieces. This is going to make sure that no sawdust would get under there and get caught between the fence and the work piece to throw off the cuts. And to hold the back end of the pieces while cutting the tapers, I'm using a small tab that's going to be attached to the back of the fence. I had this little solid maple block laying around, and so I cut the board down to 3 inches long. Then I went over to the table saw and cut 3 eighths of an inch strips from that piece. I went ahead and cut a few extra here in case that first one gets tore up on the jig. To attach the tab to the fence, I pre-drilled and countersunk some holes on it. Then I flipped the fence over and I transferred those holes to the back of the fence. Now the small tab is a little bit shorter, so when it's attached flush with the top of my fence, it's going to leave a gap underneath it for sawdust to escape, just like I did for that little groove. Now since this is a bit more tricked out of a jig, I decided to go ahead and use a commercial miter bar on it. I used the Craig miter bar, which easily attaches with screws from underneath, pretty similar to the hardwood one that I made earlier. I set my table saw to 12 inches and then laid down the sled. I put that miter bar directly over the miter slot, and I used a carpenter square to set it to 90 degrees to the edge. And then I attached the bar with screws into pre-drilled holes. Now, to assemble the jig, the hold-down clamps go into the fence first, and then the T-bolts and knobs hold the fence into the adjustment slots. The bolts are a little long for the adjustment knobs, I'm going to cut those to size later, but you want to leave the hold down bolts as long as you can to help clamp thick work pieces. I moved the fence out of the way and then I raised my blade and made that initial cut to make the sled to size. Now this was my first time using this style of tapering jig since I've always had that simple version. And I've got to say it is definitely easier to use and quicker to set up, though it gives the same results as the other one. Now I do like the ease of adjustability for use as a straight line or joining jig though. It's quick and easy to set up a board with a rough edge and then maybe it has a large crook on the other side so you couldn't ride it against the table saw fence. Clamping it down on the sled and sending it through the table saw gives you a perfect straight edge. They're still going to need a joiner or a planer to address a bow like this in the wood. Hmm. More jigs. If you want some more shop jigs, I got a playlist queued up for you right there. I think you're going to like those as well. And let me know down below in the comments which jig you like better, the simple or the fancy version. Until next time, guys, get out there and build something awesome.